Washington football team week two preseason game has just finished. Well, I guess Friday night. And uh, we got a lot of things to talk about, Todd. We saw some players shine. We see some players kind of flop. We saw the backup defensive linemen not mm-hmm. looking too good. The edge mm-hmm. which might be a question. But I'm excited from what I saw. And I'm looking forward to this upcoming preseason game on Saturday. Because it looks like the starters will get some time. And Ron's treating it like a... Really like a game week, but all things considered, Todd, how you feeling? I'm good, man. Uh, I'm excited to hear that week three is kind of the dress rehearsal because I wasn't sure yeah. if week three is the dress rehearsal or if week three is what has been week four. So it's kind of good to hear. And I think part of that, I would bet, is because of how the offense hasn't scored a touchdown in preseason mm-hmm. yet, right? Which is like not a major concern, something we'll touch mm-hmm. on, but. I think if they would have had more success then maybe Rivera would have seen enough. I think he wants to see more and give them more chances to get in a rhythm. So I like that they are using that third game as a uh, as a dress rehearsal. So I'm feeling good because that's exciting because that means it'll, I mean, we'd watch it either way, yeah. but it kind of is, there's more anticipation. It's a bit more exciting. So that's sure. how I'm doing. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I was uh, want to share a quick story. Uh, at okay. GameStop, picking up Madden mm-hmm. release. Obviously, they don't have the midnight release anymore. They have the nine o'clock, well, eight thirty slash nine o'clock mm-hmm. release. And I'm sitting there at GameStop, excited. Just got the PS Five, so I'm looking forward. To, you know, and I'm just I'm talking to a guy in front of me, and we're just talking about PS Five, and we're talking about Madden, and all this and that, and. Um, the door opens behind us and it's 8 30 it's about four of us in there mm-hmm. you know and i look back and i'm like double take look back again and there's antonio gibson and i'm just like <laughs> oh my goodness I'm just like no way <laughs> i'm like i talked to the dude in front of me i'm like yo is, is that antonio gibson and he's like yo oh my goodness that's antonio he's talking to his, he's talking to his girlfriend he's like babe that's antonio gibson oh my goodness that's antonio gibson so so we, we talk and um, he ends up coming up. I'm like, yo, Antonio Gibson? I don't know why when we meet famous people, we say first name, last name. Yeah, I, I know, know, I, know, I, know. <laughs> you know like, <laughs> I know. But it also feels weird if you don't. <laughs> right, right. It feels weird if you don't. Yeah. So it's like reverence, I guess, respect. But <laughs> <laughs> <Antonio> right. <Gibson. laughs> right. But then I talked to him, man. And, and, and one thing he said, I asked him if he was ready for the season. He said, yeah, he said, I'm ready. He said, I'm ready to show out. And um, That's awesome. it, was, it was cool. And then right That's walking really cool. in behind him, it was right in the pecking order, uh, rightfully so, it was Peyton Barber. And uh, <laughs> got, got to take a picture with both of them. And it was just cool just seeing them and, and just and, and just being able to interact with them. And um, it was so cool. But the guy with his girlfriend, he's like, babe, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. That's Antonio Gibson. He's like, yo, I got you in fantasy football. I got you in fantasy. You better go crazy. And it was, just, it was just a cool experience, man. I remember I called you right, right when yeah. I saw him. Like, dude, yeah. you won't believe, you know. Yeah. But – um that was just cool dude just seeing i mean sometimes you see one player yeah but to see two players right right just and then in a in a small place where you can have like right. interaction it's not crowded like not crowded you know it's just That's like wow really it's pretty cool, cool. Pretty like cool. i always wonder like what are the odds of that because like they oh stay God. in a hotel near <laughs> springfield shore but what are the odds of them coming they you were probably in there in there for a few minutes they are probably in there for a few minutes what are the odds of y'all crossing paths? that's really really cool crazy Crazy. So that's I think that's a story people will definitely appreciate. Oh, yeah. And I sure. mean, like standing next to him in the picture that like you, you took. I mean, first of all, I, I think I it was in that picture. I realized how big his thighs are. Oh, Maybe my they goodness, were big, yes. but his but, calves are like huge. Antonio Gibson calves are like huge. Dude. Like oh, his, my his shorts are fitted like they are they are They are wrapping tightly around his legs. And then like he, you're, you're a little bit taller than him, actually. Right? Yeah, you're like yeah. an inch or two. You got an inch or two yeah. on him. Yeah. He's probably got some pounds though and some strength on yeah, you. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. That's that's, not a okay, so I guess that's a good segue talking about players going into the game and talking about players. As always, check out our sponsors, uh, Hot Chicken Kitchen in Wood in Woodbridge, Virginia. Try them out. Need to go back there because it's been too long and get a Nashville style chicken sandwich, and I promise you'll love it. Look them up. They're right by Potomac Mills, which has everything you could ever want to do. Do some shopping. Uh, do some family stuff and get some hot chicken kitchen. And then uh, Done Pro Financial just released a new course where you can teach yourself how to repair your credit instead of paying five, six hundred thousand dollars. You pay them monthly a low fee and they will tell you how to do it yourself, which it can be done. You can do it yourself. You just have to know what you're doing. 
on just need some uh, some stamps pretty much. Mm -hmm. So check that out. It's called Diligent by Done Pro. It's a new course that they've just announced. Check it out with the link that we have below. Or if you're listening to the podcast, check out the link in the bio for this and go learn how to fix your credit and learn how to budget. It's not just credit stuff, it's financial stuff. So check that out. Let's go right into, well, the first thing actually let's talk about before we go into real or fake, let's talk about Steven Sims Jr. Just released. Last time it was Kelvin Hardman, a 2019 receiver. Now it's Steven Sims, a 2019 receiver. I'm not shocked. It's interesting to me how they're kind of being <laughs> let go separate from everyone else, mm -hmm. but I'm not shocked. I didn't expect him to make the roster. He got his chance last year. Harmon never got his chance, and that was just unfortunate. Sims got his chance and just wrecked it. And I mean, both of them were late round to undrafted players from a previous group of coaches and scouts and everyone. And then they've added, they drafted three receivers in the last two years, Ron Rivera and his group, on top of the people they've signed. I'm not surprised. I doubt you are. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised either. When when you come into a situation like that, new new regime, you got to work ten times harder yeah. to kind of win that win that regime over. You look at Terry McLaurin. I mean, obviously, I mean he, he worked hard and, and he earned a spot. Jonathan right. Allen, he worked hard. He bust bust his chops. He got paid. You know, so I mean, and nothing's going to be handed to you. And and I it didn't surprise me. Steve Sims, he's, <clears throat> I mean, DeAndre Carter, with the punt returns, he's making it looking. I mean, dude, look good. Look, right. He's, he's looked right. really, really good, really up the field, straight to the point. And I'm just I'm just tired of him dancing and doing this and that. He's just part of that regime where, like, Dwayne Haskins and uh, Kelvin Harmon and, and Steve Sims, and I'm just ready to get rid of all of that. Let's just start. Let's just start. Start over. See, start afresh. You didn't win. It's not that these guys are terrible players. I mean, they're not special, but yeah. you didn't win anything with them. Yeah. You lost with them. There's no reason to hold on. On top of that, um, what I was going to add – Man, what was I going to add? I forgot what I was going to add. But anyway, it's going to be interesting to see now how it shakes out with the punt returner because that's mm -hmm. really the main question for me. There's only been four guys working there. Sims was one of them. Milne, Carter, and Wright are the other three. Uh, Dax Millen has been catching everything coming his way, did a little work with the ones today in practice, has experience as a punt returner. He's not explosive or dynamic, but is that what they want? Uh, DeAndre Carter has been on eight teams. You know, so he's been around, he's been in the league since I think 2015, mm -hmm. you know, and then Isaiah Wright, it's, it's going to be interesting. And I go back and forth. I'm kind of thinking Milne right now, but I don't know. Do you have a leader in that, in that group when you kind of look uh, at punt return more than anything? I'm, I'm going to say Carter. Okay. Uh, but if all else fails, I think they'll go Humphreys just to be safe. Mm -hmm. So let's talk some real or fake. You throw some at me, I'll throw some at you. We'll go back and forth. And we'll try to keep it, try to keep each one on the quicker side so we can uh, just kind of hit as many as we can. So you can uh, hit me first. I'll go with Tor, um, retire. Real or fake? I'm going to go with real. I, I, I think he makes the roster. I think he's your fifth cornerback. I just think that, for one, they brought him in. That's always going to give me the edge over the guys they didn't bring in. He's scrappy. He's always around the ball and, you know, always, I mean, obviously he doesn't have a ton of playing time, but he's around the ball, but also just look at where he is practicing when, uh, past couple of days with, with, uh, William Jackson, the third out or with Kendall Fuller out with both of them out Tori McTire's out there with St. Juice. We know St. Juice is real. McTire's out there. It's not Apke out there. It's not Danny Johnson out there. It's not Daryl Roberts. It's McTire. So I, I'm going real. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to follow up after that. I, I like him a lot. I love his game. Yeah. Uh, the moment's not too big for him. Last week he was starting with St. Juice and Kendall. And, no, St. Juice and Moreland in the uh, slot. Right, right. He did. They did good. They did good. And the D-line is going to make him look even better. So. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, the Bengals defensive line is improved from that. It was the worst in the league last year. It's improved. It's not great, though. Still some topic, some talk on Twitter. They've improved, but they're still not great. Uh, but they were given the Washington offensive line a decent amount of trouble this past preseason game real or fake on the offensive line kind of struggling with an average at best defensive line fake, I, i'm gonna say they put in a lot of money into the d line and they drafted some guys so obviously they're gonna come out hungry um mm -hmm. i think it was a wake-up call for the offensive yeah. line i think you'll see a better showing against the ravens this week so i'm gonna go ahead and say fake because you pretty much got everybody back you got you actually improved at right tackle, left guard, yeah. 
maybe stay the same uh, left tackle. From Duran Christian, team. you've improved. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so, so I think it's I think it's a matter of cohesion. I wouldn't stress too much about it. Like I said, the Bengals put a lot into that D line, whether it's free agency or whether it was through the draft. So I expect them to come out and try to prove a point. But the real test will be this week. So I'll say fake. But if we struggle this week with starters out there against Baltimore, then we might have to consider some things. But I'm gonna say fake. Okay, I'll probably go fake too, uh, just because it's preseason and and not not overreacting. But yeah. it still wasn't something you want to see. There was a lot of push from what is not a great improved, but not a great defensive line. So I'm gonna go with fake, but that could change this week quickly. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Sam Cosby. Real. real I'm going real. I'm going real. As a as a run blocker, I think he is he is really he's really getting it down fast, and I, I think a lot of that is his physicality and athleticism, right? Where he can move and get on people, and he's big and he's fast, so he can get there and then he can handle them. As a pass blocker, I think he's doing fine. I think that just requires a you know more refined skill, more refined mm-hmm. technique. I think he's doing probably about what you would expect, maybe a little better than what you'd expect him to be doing as a second round rookie. So I think I think real all the way for sure. Yeah, I won't labor on that much. I'm going to say real. I think he's definitely better than what we had in the past, and um, I'm, I'm excited. I think he can be that cornerstone. I think PFF graded him as the highest-rated rookie uh, tackle, whether, whether it's right tackle or left tackle, in uh, preseason so far, so that's a plus. Okay. Um, and the idea of this is preseason, you never know, but what's real or what's fake. People, It's just the preseason. It is just the preseason. Some things look great and they'll be bad and vice versa. But some stuff is real in the preseason. Not everything is fake. Um, okay, here's one for you. I've been watching Jamin Davis as much as I can going back and watching him. In my opinion, this is what I've, this is, and this kind of lines up with college. I think that in this league, he will be probably a very good uh, pass defending linebacker in zone and in man and whatnot. I don't think he'll ever be a great run defending linebacker. I just don't think he's a downhill player. He's not an attack the ball downhill type of guy. I think he's more a uphill guy. So Jamin Davis as a very good pass defending linebacker, but as a not so great run defending linebacker, real or fake? I would say real, but I think it's going to take some time. I, I think he's going to real as a man. I think it's going to take him maybe to the middle of the season to get that to get that going. I think it's it's a real struggle right now. And mm. it's something to be concerned about. As you can see, they have Bostic in there because Bostic can be that, that, that heavy hitter. But I think he will start to come into his own towards the middle of the season. We'll okay. start seeing him. And I, I don't think it's a reason to stress out about. I mean, he hasn't seen quarterbacks on the center uh, much. As, as you see in the SEC, they had a lot of shotgun from, from what I hear. What he saw was a lot of shotgun in college. So, I'm going to go ahead and say real as of now, but I think by midseason or later towards the end of the year, towards a playoff push, I think we'll start to get him okay. going in that in that run defense as well. Take, see- I think I think his development is going to take a little bit longer than we expected, okay. but I think he'll end up developing into a really, really, really good player. I agree, and I'm going to say real too. Uh, I don't think that he's going to help their – if they have run, if they run game, run defense struggles from last year, carry over. I don't think he's going to do a ton to help it mm-hmm. personally. I just, I, that's just not his game really overall. I don't think, but especially right now, that's not to say I don't think he'll get better, but as we kind of look at things and try to analyze them, I think that just, I think really more, more than anything long-term, I'm, I'm not saying it'll be terrible, but long-term, I don't think he'll be known for his run defense, but I think he could definitely be known for how he, how he is, against the pass just because of his speed and his size and his agility. That's where I am on that. So we both said real, right? right. Uh, go ahead. Troy Apke, cornerback, picks in practice, two today, one PBU. <laughs> yeah. Fake, 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 <laughs> fake. I think he maybe makes the roster as your sixth cornerback slash fifth safety because he has experience at both and because of special teams. But as a player who can have success in the field, I'm fake all the way. I'm going to say real, man. <laughs> I, I, I think it as a six corner, I, I'm going to go ahead and say real. I think, I mean, he's producing. I mean, she, not okay, like, I mean sure. Like, sure. I mean, he's producing. I mean, he picked sure. up Heineke in practice. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, 
yeah okay sure man <laughs> okay troy apke all right let me give you one this is a big one Jarrett patterson as a whole he is real um he's one of those guys where you play i never played football but i'm looking mm-hmm. at it in basketball terms where you play this little guy you just cannot like what is he like he's just steady moving right. and i can just imagine the football players behind like the d-line like where is he at like just looking for him and mm-hmm. you can't really pop him you can't really yeah. hit him like that because he's so low to the ground so he's just like yeah he's real i think he's going to take over for I think he'll be the fourth back on the team. I think they'll keep Barber. But I think as the year goes on, I think he can make some big plays. I'm going to say he's real. And I think by next year, he'll probably be. I think they'll get rid of him. I don't know. Um, let's just say that he, he's, he's the real deal. Okay, I'm going to say real too. And I wasn't ready to say it after the first preseason game. But after this one, I am. Uh, because he's just a natural runner. Like he, he's he's a he's a very I mean he's sure he's playing against twos and threes, although he got a little bit of run with the ones and really mostly with the twos and more than the threes. Uh he's playing against them, but he's playing with them too, right? So I mean it kind of balances out. You can only do uh what you can with what you have. So I'm not gonna knock him for that. But it's 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 not really about who you play against, it's about how you play and the way he presses the hole, the way that he shows patience and waits for things to develop and then makes his break, the way that he can cut and glide uh, laterally. I'm going with real. I mean, he's a running back through and through. Mm-hmm. Uh so I'm going real. And then, like you said about him like taking over, which I could see, you know, probably more so next year. But I don't know how they intend to use him. Yeah. You see him doing a lot of, you know, lining up in the back. They do a lot of motion from the running backs, lining up in the backfield, then motioning out wide to empty. And I mean, they all kind of do that. But the question is, do they see him as more of a McKissick third down type uh, receiving type who you like, who can run or more of a Peyton Barber? Do you want him to just be an all around number two running back? I think in my mind, that's the ideal scenario. Right. But uh, I'm curious to see what their plans are for him long term. But I think he can kind of do it all. Yeah, I think. He, uh, yeah, he's he, one thing he surprised me with was his catching ability. Right. And I'm just shocked, like how, yeah. how well he's catching the football. But not only that, the way he's a runner, the way he holds the ball, and yeah, and it just he doesn't make mistakes. Um, I think he can be a third down back. You think so? I think so because he's so – I mean, obviously he's not as big as Barber, but he's so small that he can shift yeah. in between those little – like he can get um, – I would not be mad if we saw him in the fourth quarter take a series or two. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, you know, a series and split out Gibson wide or something. And, yeah. Because I think he can – that's when the defense is tired. He imagine right. him coming in and just squirting out like – Yeah, yeah. Sh- he's a bowling ball. I, there was one play where, you know, talk about his size – he squeezed through a hole so small. I don't think I don't think Gibson or Barber mm-hmm. could have gotten through that. He 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 really he went compact. He went like Mini Cooper, smart car mode, and he got through there. And it was impressive. Ant-Man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Ant Man. He shrunk and then he he sized back up. So I'm going I'm going real Patterson. You got any more? Uh, I, no, I'm good. Okay, I think that's. I guess my last one would be. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and the offense. I didn't say that, right? No. Okay. I'm going to make sure because it was in my head. Ryan Fitzpatrick and the offense. We saw them week one, uh, week one preseason with the little rhythm. Uh, had a third and one that you didn't convert, punted the ball. Third and five where Humphrey slipped and missed field goal, so they didn't score any points, but they, they looked like they were okay. Um, this week, not so much. Not terrible. He had a really nice completion on field to De'Ami Brown. Mm-hmm. Some other things, but then you had Ryan Fitzpatrick really more than anything forcing some throws, a couple to Adam Humphreys, a couple that really could have been intercepted and just really kind of out of sync offensively, uh, real or fake. Fake. I'm not worried. I think, like I said, this week they're going to game plan. They're going to come out there with a with a purpose, mm-hmm. and I think you'll see them put points on the board. They're just out there spit flying, you know, and just trying to get used to his receivers and see what works. I think they'll be good. I'm not worried about Fitz. I mean, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to say fake, too. Uh, It's not, And, again, it's not that we expect anything spectacular. I think it was maybe a bit of a good thing for some fans to kind of get that 
blast of like cold water. Like, okay, it's mm-hmm. like Fitzpatrick is going to have plays like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he missed two touchdowns, maybe yeah. three if you want to count the one to McLaurin, you know, but he really missed two in the end zone. So with a couple of Dwayne Haskins like throws, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's yeah. disrespectful. I shouldn't say that, yeah. but, um, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about it as a whole. I think he just kind of, he, that's, he's going to miss some throws like all quarterbacks, especially like himself, but then he'll make some really good throws like the one to Diami. And I do have one more that's not Washington football team. It is the Los Angeles chargers <laughs> and they are not playing I don't know how many of their starters. I know Justin Herbert hasn't been playing. I don't know if we'll play week three, but a number of their starters offensively at least have not been playing in the preseason. Real or fake that that will get them off to a slow start, getting to a rhythm offensively at least, you know, week one. I'm going to say real, not just because I'm a homer and because I want it to happen, but I just think that you, I mean, he's copying Sean McVay the head coach is Brandon Staley stopping Sean McVay and what Sean McVay does and um, and with the Rams. Right. But the difference is they've been in that system for a long, long time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it's pretty basic. It just has the same formations, but a lot of different Looks variants like, to it. Yeah. So they know kind of that they know what they're doing. Tree. You know what I mean? So, and this is different. He's going to a new offense, new players. I guess the, the downside for of it with us would be, RG3, you know, Kyle Shanahan coming out on the map, not knowing what, you know, what to the expect. offense is going right. to bring. Yeah, what, what we did against the Saints. I mean, yeah, we, right. We blew the Saints out, like, not blow them out, but we put the league on the map with that game. Um, I just think that this is a different situation. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they have the weapons, they have the tools. <laughs> I'm yeah, nervous do. about that game. I think that game is going to be a, a 17 13 type of game, 20 13, 27. Mm, yeah, type of game. yeah. Defensive gritty game. And that's part because of our offense, our struggles on offense, and because our defense. And I think that their offense not getting a lot of work throughout the, you know, real work. And they, they may have some injuries. So they, they yeah. need to get hit some, you know. And, and, and our defense isn't the defense that you're trotting out, you know, the first time. They yeah. Get hit, right, so, right. I, I'm gonna say real. I think I think it's gonna hurt them. I think it may take them a while to get start get get off to you know get up, get going. I'll say real too again because of the new offense thing. If it was the same offense, I'd say no fake, no problem. But new offense, it's, I think that things may be a little out of sync to start when you're playing against another team and a defense that should be good. Um, I think they'll get their rhythm. At some point, I mean, they may struggle in the first half and then get it in the second half of the first game. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do think there will be some level of not in sync because you just didn't get those reps in preseason. And camp reps are great and very important preseason as well. But the regular season against another team is different. So, I mean, would it be conditioned? You know, like that's 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 I mean, that's my question. Yeah. 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 You'll be conditioned, but game condition, game speed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is. Game speed is different from practice and preseason. Yeah. And I guess we both hope we're right too, because yeah. that would be good and hope the defense doesn't get off to a slow start for any reason. So we will see because we are less than three weeks away today. Yeah. We are less than 21 days. We are 20 days, right? Mm-hmm. 20 days away from week one. So excited. Uh, so the last thing I have to say before we wrap this up is I, and I should have said this earlier, but for the first time in my life, really way before I ever thought I'm a season ticket holder which is pretty cool. Congratulations mm-hmm. to me. I, I definitely, mm-hmm. I definitely didn't anticipate doing this now for mm-hmm. a number of reasons <laughs> met <laughs> largely involved financial. Also, I do enjoy being at games. I enjoy the experience and the atmosphere. However, I do also enjoy watching at home on TV because it's a different feel. You kind of, you know, they're it. comfortable, but then also you can see more and you can keep track of other things going on. Yeah. And, you, you know, you can watch with your friends. So I, I like both. There's a lot of logistical concerns with going to the game, you know, yeah. just paying for parking or catching yeah. the Metro and walking all that stuff. So I can see both sides. And then you and I tell you, you know, we go to church every Sunday. We yeah. get out, let's say 12. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you get out or if you leave at 12, leave a little early or something, you got to race over to the stadium. Then you got to park. Then you got to walk. Then you got to get in your seats. And so you got to change. And you, you got to change too. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You got to change. So, that's why it's never really been big for us, but I am excited to be a, uh, a season ticket holder and to have my chance to attend. Definitely not all games, home games, but some of them. And part of it is because I want 
to like be a part or feel a part of the organization in that way as mm-hmm. well to yeah. uh, because you kind of feel more attached, yeah, right? You, sure, you know, sure. and so um, I'm excited about that. Tay, I know that I know that if you weren't getting married, they might have gotten you to. I know they, they might have well, gotten you very well. Would and, have. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I also at the stadium, I don't love. I love the, you know, the 100 section is great. The 400 section is obviously up high. I like the first row of the 400 section. That's where I am. I prefer to be in the middle at the 50, 401, 454. I think I'm, I'm actually right down the goalpost at 415 at row one. To, so there's no one in front. I haven't been yet. I wasn't there Friday, but uh, someone went in place of me and sent me a picture. And I really do like the angle. It's, it's like an all 22 angle. You can't see everything mm-hmm. perfectly clearly just looking at the field. Mm -hmm. Um, from end zone to end zone. So I'm excited about that. And then I'll add as well that I will be looking to sell some tickets because like I said, I won't make it to every game. I already have tickets to the Thursday night game long before I came to season ticket holder may not make it to week one. So weeks one and two, I'll probably be looking to sell my tickets and I do want to make sure they go to Washington fans. I don't want to do it on Ticketmaster, and I will do it at a price that's less than what Ticketmaster charges you when they add all those fees and everything. So if you're interested, let me know uh, because I will be looking to sell those tickets to fans at a at a better deal. So that that's another thing. Having season tickets, I can make sure that the tickets go where I want them yeah. to go. Yeah. So I'm just excited about that. It was very cool. It was a good experience, and the organization made it very easy. They made it affordable. And uh, our, our my rep Joe, the last name is slipping my mind right now, <laughs> but uh, he wasn't pushy. He, he he presented it. He told us what it was. He gave us a private tour around the stadium. He didn't try to push us. And so it was a good experience all in all. I definitely recommend looking into it if you're interested because upper level starts at 500, lower level starts at 1,000. Definitely just see what see what they've got. So I'm excited about that. That's all I've got, Tay. I'm excited for you, man. Like I said, I wish I could, but hey, <laughs> next yeah, You time, got some more time. important stuff going yeah. on. <laughs> I kind of do too, but I, I have so, a plan. You know. Yeah, I, right. I, I'll, I, yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. All right. You'll be good. You'll be good. <laughs> and my wife signed off on it. She trusts me. She trusts me. So, okay. Thank you to everyone who watches, everyone who subscribed, everyone who likes, everyone who listens, everyone who comments. Try to get, try to reply to as many comments as we can. Um, and then we had a name episode, but now we're just talking more about football stuff, you know, until the name kind of goes up again. And so we'll be back here soon, maybe doing a rewatch, try out some rewatches of games as our own way of looking back at games rather than just talking. As always, thank you for your support. This is Todd. This is Tate. Talk to you later.